Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Please excuse my red nose because I'm a little bit under the weather today, but I wanted to share with you some of my tips because as you guys know, in July of 2017, I moved in to my very first apartment in downtown Toronto, which is a very expensive city. <laughs> if you are new to my channel and don't know my backstory, I work in downtown Toronto, so this is where I move. Also, if you're new, welcome. Please subscribe to my channel by clicking the button down below and turn on the post notifications because it will really help out my channel and help me grow. But today I am talking about how I moved into my apartment here and got my basic pieces all for about a thousand dollars Canadian. <laughs> I worked really hard to stay on a budget and do things smart. Like I said, this is my very first apartment and it's not my forever home. I don't own it here. So I'm okay with getting things a little bit on the cheap end, quality pieces, but doing it on a budget just so that it was feasible for me. And over the years, I will start to get better pieces, especially once I own my own home. But for now, this is how I did it. And I'm really proud of how I did it on a budget. And I wanna share my tips with you. So my first tip is to look at what you already have and think about what you can sell. Selling these pieces that you no longer need, although you won't get a whole bunch of money from doing that, you will make a little bit of extra cash that you can now put towards getting some of your new pieces and make things a little bit more affordable. So whether you are moving out of your parents' house and maybe there's some pieces there that um, you won't be using anymore or are in good shape but you don't want to bring them to your new place because they're not gonna um, match or they're not no longer the theme you want go ahead and list those either on Kijiji let go is a really great app or even um, Facebook groups there's a lot of buy and sell Facebook groups for your area so for example here there's a lot titled like buy and sell Toronto definitely look that up on Facebook and you'll see a whole bunch of groups that usually you have to ask to join them but then you can just post your stuff and people will make you offers be realistic with your offers and if you want to get rid of your items really quickly you need to list them for a cheap price I was really lucky that when I moved into this apartment the previous tenant left a few pieces from Ikea so I used a few of them and then the ones that I didn't want to use I sold them and earned a little bit of cash that I put towards some of my new pieces so I sold an Ikea four cube calyx um, shelf for $30 and I sold the couch that she left it was a love seat and there was like a little bit of a stain on it for $150 on I think let go as well so that gave me $180 that I can now put towards some new pieces so for keeping a total right now I am up $180 now that you've looked at what you can sell look at what you can get for free if you're living in an apartment this is the perfect opportunity to go into the large garbage room of your apartment and see what kind of furniture there is because a lot of people when moving out don't want to move things don't want to sell things um, or just don't have time to do that so they end up in the garbage in my building specifically there's like an area for larger items where it's like not near the dumpster um, it's just kind of like a corner where people will put furniture and then once a month I believe it gets picked up by a company but if you check like towards the end of the month or the beginning of the month when people are moving out and in um, that is a great time to check for items that you can find for free and I've also talked to friends of mine that have done the same thing um, this is like a known trick to look into the garbage room um, for pieces but here is my warning it's obviously the garbage so look for things that don't collect germs for example, I found my kitchen table, which is glass and has aluminum legs, in the garbage. So this was 100% free for me. All I did was take it into the shower and like sanitize and clean it up. And then obviously because it was glass, I wiped it down with Windex and it looked good as new. And this piece, I love it. It's perfect and I honestly couldn't have purchased a better piece for my space. So this one was just a great find, but it was absolutely free. And like I said, it's something that can be wiped down and cleaned and disinfected it's not something like a couch I don't recommend taking a couch or any sort of like pillow or anything that you know can collect um, or you can't properly clean can collect germs don't take that from the garbage so again if we are keeping a total right now I am still up $180 because those items were free now moving on to the things that I purchased so I needed to get a couch and again 
This is up to you and up to your own discretion, but I did purchase my couch off of LetGo. LetGo and Kijiji are pretty much the same concept, um, but LetGo is an app only, and personally I find it easier to message and talk with um, people in your local area. It's a lot easier to use, so I personally like LetGo, but totally up to you. I, I look on both, but some of the pieces that I happen to find just happen to be on LetGo. And if you're not familiar with either of those services, um, I think Craigslist is another one like that of things that are, that are for sale and it's usually in your local area so you have to go pick them up sometimes they'll deliver but they'll usually charge and it's just like a peer-to-peer -peer service so I found this love seat with an ottoman on let go and it was originally from Leon's still on the Leon's website that's how you know it was gently used and still pretty much brand new it was listed I believe for $400 and I negotiated it down to $300 and it was originally probably almost 900 I believe. After speaking with the woman who had posted it, I found out that she was an elderly lady that really didn't use the couch very much and she was moving and it didn't fit in her new place. So that's why she was getting rid of it. She even said herself she bought it like six months ago. It was very gently used. So that's why I was okay with buying a couch off of let go or second hand but again I caution you because even if you try to disinfect it I disinfected mine with um, like putting some baking soda on it and then vacuuming it up you can even spray your couch with rubbing alcohol I've seen that before and then you can kind of like wipe it down it is still risky because you don't know like what's inside the couch or like can't properly clean it I know you can bring things to the dry cleaner but again we're on a budget here <laughs> so do err on the side of caution but that was my experience and always negotiate on these secondhand websites because it is a buyer's market because obviously the person wants to sell their stuff and usually on a time crunch next I purchased the eight calic Ikea shelf off of Kijiji for $60 so not only did I buy this for half price but it was already built for me. So Ikea stuff is great to buy secondhand for that reason that it's already built for you and because this is cheap and inexpensive furniture and people are buying it because it is cheap and expensive and kind of disposable. So people will kind of keep their Ikea stuff for a year or two years and then usually get rid of it. That's just what I've found. So when you're buying Ikea stuff that is secondhand, you know that it's gently used. Also a tip is when you go and look at this stuff that was listed on these secondhand websites, you're not obligated to buy it. If you go and you see, oh, like there's a huge scratch on this piece of furniture and you don't want it, you don't need to buy it. <laughs> I also find that Ikea stuff goes really quickly on these websites. So you kind of need to just go pick it up when you see it or like make an offer right away. So I now have two Ikea shelves because one was left by the previous tenant and then one I purchased a matching one off of Kijiji. So I went to Ikea and bought the inserts brand new and for $100 I was able to organize all of my belongings and one of them I keep my clothes in so I can neatly fold my sweaters and things like that and store them away. Next on my list is bedding. So I spent about $150 on my bedding. You can see my bed behind me. I bought a new duvet and then new pillows and I got them all from HomeSense. So I really recommend going to HomeSense or HomeGoods, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, those stores because they have great quality pieces for lower prices. I really recommend going there. Your bedding, in my opinion, really needs to be great quality, but you don't wanna spend a ton of money, so that's where I find the best prices. And also it helped me save money that I already had the duvet insert from my bed at home. So I brought that with me, obviously, when I came here, and that helped me save some money because that piece is expensive but then the duvet cover is a little bit less expensive so I was able to change up um, my decor without spending too much money getting everything again next on my list is an area rug so I did a bunch of shopping around looking for an area rug this is something you don't want to buy secondhand in my opinion um, so I went to all of like the home stores I went to like Home Depot Lowe's I looked at HomeSense they have some great quality rugs but they were a little bit more on the pricey side and again this is my first apartment I wanted something practical but I'm not sure if this is like the look that I'm gonna keep forever or how long I'm gonna be here so I didn't want to spend too too much money I found the perfect rug at Walmart for a hundred dollars so yes it's not a silky rug that you would find at HomeSense or more expensive store that has like silk in it 
but it's very practical. It's easy to clean and to vacuum, um, and it was the right size. It's a five by seven rug for a hundred bucks. I thought that was a good deal. Next, when moving, I needed a bed frame. So I do live in a studio apartment, and because of where I put my bed here in the corner, a regular bed frame wasn't going to fit. So I actually DIY'd one myself, and I bought all of the supplies at Home Depot, and I believe it came to about a hundred dollars. And with that, I was able to um, raise the bed a bit and incorporate some storage bins underneath for added storage in a small apartment, which is always a necessity. So I thought that was a great deal. An A plus on functionality. Next, I needed some counter height stools for the table that I have. I went on let go and I found these stools originally from Buclair Home and the set of two of them, I paid $75. They were listed for more, but again, I negotiated down. They are in brand new condition. Again, when you go look at your items, you're not obligated to buy them, but go check them out and see what the quality is like and if it's true to what the pictures look like. So these stools were in absolutely brand spanking new condition. They're no longer sold on the Buclair website, but that's a tip. Uh, when you're online shopping, look at some stores that you like their items from and then use those keywords to search on either Kijiji, Letgo, Craigslist, any of those services because oftentimes those words will come up either in the description of the product because the seller will list where it was originally purchased um, and that will help you narrow down your searches. So that's a great tip that I have to offer you. My apartment has wall to ceiling windows on this side so I needed to get some curtains. I really wanted white and I was having a hard time finding curtains that weren't too sheer but I did luck out with these um, also I needed like super tall ones because I said wall to ceiling uh, windows so I had to get like the nine foot uh, nine foot length curtains whatever that is definitely look at home sense that's where I was looking first but I couldn't find matching ones because I needed four panels and I found these ones at fabric land so on curtains I spent about a hundred bucks which I guess that's a little bit expensive. Um, I probably could have found them cheaper at HomeSense, but curtains are expensive. Expensive, especially when you need like super tall ones and then last but not least I painted this apartment before moving in well my dad did he helped me out and on paint and supplies we spent about $80 so my grand total for everything was $1,065 that is what I spent on my basics for moving into my apartment yes I obviously bought things since then but those were the basic pieces that got me started. And those are the things that I bought like all at once when I first moved in. So I hope that this video gave you some helpful tips and, and can motivate you to let you know that you can definitely move out on your own on a budget. It's doable. Let me know your thoughts down below. Would you ever buy anything on Kijiji? Have you had any horror stories? Or what is the best deal you've ever gotten on something that you've bought secondhand? I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and I will talk to you guys in my next one. Bye! Mm -hmm.